Good. Good. Make it full screen. Okay, so what we did was we finished up to protein precipitation and just a quick overview of what we did last time in protein precipitation we were mainly concerned with separating analytes from biological fluids which could be a urine sample or a serum sample or a plasma sample or even a blood sample it is considered to be a very quick an inexpensive technique to separate analytes from biological fluids most commonly employed protein precipitants are methanol and acetonitrile apart from others as well which includes which includes trifluoroacetic acid even acetic acid sometimes formic formic acid is also being used as a protein precipitant this is a very simple process in which you add you take your sample and you add three volumes of the protein precipitant three volumes of protein precipitant which means if you take 0.5 ml of your sample you add 1.5 ml of your protein precipitant and then you vortex it and then put it in a centrifuge machine once you have centrifuged it for say about 5 to 10 minutes you can decant the supernatant that is the liquid portion and leave the residue which settles at the bottom and this extract can be directly taken for analysis so this is one of the uh, major advantage of this protein precipitation the other technique which i would be focusing on focusing on would be now solid phase extraction now this is considered to be one of the most uh no preferred technique because it provides samples which are very clear that means the extracts obtained after solid phase extraction are very clear they do not have practically any sort of matrix so essentially it is a highly efficient extraction process much higher efficient than liquid liquid extraction and protein precipitation but the one of the limitations which we can add here is that it is slightly expensive and it involves multiple steps for complete extraction so two limitations which we can associate with solid phase extraction are it is relatively expensive and second it involves multiple steps for separation so this is what we can associate with solid phase extraction now what is it as you can see it has a material which we call as a solid phase material and that is essentially silica that is essentially silica silica which is bonded with 
some functional groups to make it hydrophobic in nature to make it hydrophobic in nature now <clears throat> we know that silica as such is a highly polar compound is a highly polar compound so if we use bare silica that means unmodified silica then in that case there will be irreversible interaction between the analyte and the material which is used in solid phase extraction therefore and we all know that our samples are essentially aqueous based so if you have a hydrophobic surface then it becomes difficult for the solution to come in contact with this solid phase material and therefore we need to condition this material first by treating it with methanol methanol is an organic solvent but fortunately it is miscible with water so preconditioning of solid phase extraction material is essential such that the aqueous based sample can come in contact with the solid phase material this is what is essential in solid phase extraction <clears throat> i'll just repeat again in solid phase extraction the material employed for extraction is silica based silica which is bonded with hydrophobic functionalities so as to make it waterproof otherwise silica as such as i said is highly polar so there will be chances of polar polar interactions highly polar polar interactions which are which could be irreversible in nature and if it is irreversible in nature the entire purpose is defeated therefore it is bonded with hydrophobic materials one moment i'll just make it full screen so that i'm able to operate this now another important feature which we can associate with solid phase extraction is selectivity which is one of the most important criteria for extraction selectivity degree of selectivity selectivity of solid phase extraction is much higher as compared to liquid liquid extraction or protein precipitation and interactions through which the interactions through which extraction occurs using solid phase extraction are ion exchange mechanism hydrophobic retention even hydrogen bonding van der waal interactions and ion dipole interactions these are some of the modes of interaction of analyte with the solid phase adsorbent solid phase material that is silica based that is how analytes come in contact with it get retained on the surface and these are i mean these this figure will tell you how a solid phase extraction cartridge looks like as you can see on the left hand side this is a simple cartridge which is available commercially which is available commercially the price is one moment somebody is there 
I'll just admit him. So, on the left hand side, as you can see, this is a cartridge which is commercially available. And this is the light blue colored is the material, silica based material, which I was talking about. And then this, this is a slightly darker colored blue, which is one moment. Again, I am finding somebody wants to join. Okay. So you have <clears throat> you have your material here, and this is a sintered disc. This is a sintered disc which holds this solid phase material. And then when you pass your sample, this is the star one is your analyte, and the remaining ones are your matrix. So if you pass a sample through this cartridge. What happens is everything gets retained on this extraction cartridge. Practically everything gets retained on this extraction cart cartridge. The next step is washing step. In a washing step, in washing step, what you do is you try to remove, you try to remove the unwanted materials from your matrix. You try to remove unwanted materials from the matrix and in the last step you try to elute the analyte of interest now every step is dictated by the choice of solvent which you use because it's the solvent which which actually it's the solvent which actually affords separation sometimes you use weaker solvents other times you use stronger solvents. So if you use a very strong solvent, which can dissolve only your analyte of interest, that is what you want. But prior to that, you need to wash your material with weaker solvents. When I say weaker solvents means the eluting strengths of those weak, weaker solvents. So through these steps, the analyte, the interfering, and uh, one minute, the interfering ions are the interfering ions are one moment. Uh, the interfering ions are removed using weaker solvents, and when you use a solvent in which only your analyte is miscible or dissolves, it affords separation of analyte exclusively, exclusively. Now, this is another figure which tells us about the material which you use, solid phase material. In the previous figure, you saw that the material used was silica based. Now, silica as such is highly stable once it is bonded up to say pH 8. Beyond pH 8, those extraction cartridges might not be useful. And therefore, people work with material which are polymeric in nature. So instead of silica, one uses polymers, crossed linked polymers as solid phase material in solid phase extraction. The purpose remains the same. We need to elute the unwanted mat material or matrix and we want to retain the analytes or the analytes of interest. And once the matrix is removed, 
the n lights are eluted with the strong solvents and again the purity or the efficiency obtained is much higher as compared to the um, other techniques now these are certain steps as i was mentioning that this is one of the one can I, one can say is a limitation associated with solid phase extraction there are four different steps the first step is conditioning conditioning means you make the material responsive towards aqueous phase aqueous base samples because it is hydrophobic in nature naturally you want to make it responsive aapko koi response milna chahiye analyte should and matrix should be retained but if it is totally hydrophobic it becomes difficult for that sample to come in contact with the stationary phase or the stationary material solid phase material isliye usko pehle conditioning ki jati hai and essentially conditioning karne ka solvent liya jata hai and that is methanol once it is condition then you add your sample to this cartridge from the top once you have added you the next step is that is once you add that means you retain everything on your stationary phase material that's that is known as the retention step once everything is retained you wash your cartridge or rinse your cartridge with a suitable solvent so as to remove so as to remove the unwanted material or the matrix components once the matrix components are removed what you have on the on the solid phase material is the analyte or the analytes of interest then the last step that is elution with a stronger solvent so if you use a strong solvent in the final step you get an extract which contains exclusively the analyte or analytes of interest so this is how solid phase extraction works and these are four different steps of solid phase extraction that is all you need to understand and explain when you are asked to write on solid phase extraction and as i was talking about the interactions solid phase extractions utilize non polar polar and electrostatic interactions one moment there is somebody in the queue see this is your stationary phase material or the solid phase material which is silica based which has functionalities these are the functionalities these are the functionalities and these are the analytes this is one analyte this is another analyte now here if this is the case when you have a very hydrophobic kind of a functionality there will be hydrophobic interactions there will be hydrophobic interactions there will always be wonderwall forces wonderwall interactions wonderwall interactions are universal interactions they happen any time anywhere with any type of substances wonderwall interactions then you have dipolar interactions or hydrogen bonding interactions but for that you need to have certain functionalities in your stationary phase itself the bonded stationary phase itself so that you have efficient hydrogen bonding with the analytes of interest and then you have another set of interactions which we call as electrostatic attraction wherein the bonded silica has some functional groups which hold charges which is opposite to that of analyte as you can see here this is so3 negative so it is 
this negative charge which interacts with the positive charge that is the ammonium ion here in the analyte of interest which interacts with the negative charge which results in electrostatic attraction and that is how the analytes of interest interest get retained on the surface of the solid phase material okay is it clear up to this point i just wanted to ask because i cannot see anyone and i'm just speaking so is it okay or do i need to repeat something sir can you repeat steps of solid phase extraction what 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 uh, which one which one uh four steps thena piche conduction retention or go on okay okay and who are you can i know your name urmi urmi okay urmi you are talking about this these four steps now as i mentioned for efficient extraction using solid phase extraction there are four principal steps four general steps as well and these are the first one is conditioning the second is retention followed by washing or rinsing and the final step is elution in one moment there is somebody i just allow him okay now as you can see the first step is conditioning step conditioning step means since your solid phase material is hydrophobic water repelling water repelling therefore you need to make it responsive towards the aqueous phase because aqueous phase the sample is essentially aqueous based one moment so your sample is aqueous based so when you have an aqueous based sample and you are putting it in a material which is water repellent naturally you need to do something you need to condition your sample your cartridge sorry prior to placing your analyte or your sample into this cartridge and for that one uses one passes methanol solvent methanol being non aqueous it passes through this stationary phase by of, of course by applying some pressure once it is conditioned with methanol then when you add your aqueous sample what happens is water being miscible with methanol it is easier for the sample to come in contact with the stationary phase material and that is what we call as retention retention of the analyte as well as as well as the matrix both in the second step in the third step which we call as washing step or rinsing step this step is essentially to remove the unwanted matrix using a suitable solvent system single solvent or a mixture of solvents once this is done what remains in your solid phase material is the analyte of interest and once that is this once that is achieved you need to elute matlab nikalna elute the analyte of interest from the solid phase material using a very proper choice of solvent system and finally what you obtain after doing the elution that is the elution step you obtain extracts which are which are very clear 
very clean devoid of matrix and essentially have the analyte or analytes of interest and hence these four steps provide highly efficient extraction of analytes from biological samples as well as non biological samples that is what i intended to say or using these four steps is it clear urmi yes sir good so i'll move ahead now now this is now you you can see these cartridges right these are these are simple cartridges which are again available commercially similar cartridges are also found for solid phase extraction but now what happens is uh when you one when one is has removed proteins in any biological sample but it has been found it has been observed that in addition to proteins there are lipids as well in your biological samples and to remove lipids it is difficult to remove those lipids or phospholipids using your simple sp tool therefore there is a slight modification to the existing spme spe solid phase extraction and these are again commercially available cartridges which are called as hybrid sp because they remove proteins as well as phospholipids and they remove phospholipids and proteins with very high efficiency so actually they look very similar to your conventional solid phase extraction cartridges but they serve a different purpose they serve to remove phospholipids as well as proteins now there are two versions which you will find commercially available one is on the left hand side you can see these are the cartridges commercially available and then you have a hybrid sp plus which has 96 such cartridges in a tray in a tray and a simple tray so one can do 96 extractions at the same time for large number of samples and they provide very good recovery of analytes the extracts are very clear very clean devoid of any matrix they do not contain any matrix but they work on a slightly different principle so this is what i just mentioned that these are commercially available products and these products you will find with a capacity of 1 ml to 6 ml that means you can load 1 to 6 ml of your sample in these hybrid sp phospholipid cartridges and <clears throat> it can be executed offline as well as online i mean all versions are available commercially if you want to treat 96 samples online that also can be done if you want to treat one sample at a time using a simple cartridge phospholipid cartridge that also can be done offline so basically they are used to remove phospholipids as well as proteins this is the striking difference between this hybrid sp and the conventional sp so they 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 work as a protein precipitants and they also work as sp protein precipitants means they remove proteins and when they work as sp they remove phospholipids as well now there is a slight as i mentioned there is a slight difference slight difference in the way 
or the principle on which it works. Now, what is that principle? I think the next slide will, will, will help you in understanding what I mean. Now, this is a silica particle. So this stationary phase material is again silica based, but it is chemically modified. It is chemically modified, chemically modified with some zirconium complexes, with some zirconium complexes. Just a moment, just a moment. I have a call, I'll just take it. Okay, uh, can you see the slide now? Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay. So now this again has silica. It is silica based, but it is chemically modified. It has a zirconium attached to the silica surface. It has zirconium attached to a silica surface. What is this? zirconium what silica uh, zirconium does zirconium acts as a lewis acid because it has vacant d orbitals and we know that th these are these are the structures of phospholipids this is one such structure there are many other structures of phospholipids uh, but these are lewis base uh, so phospholipid acts as a lewis base and the zirconium which is bounded with the silica surface Silica means SiOH, SiOH, SiOH. It is bonded with zirconium, which has empty D orbitals. It acts as a Lewis acid. So there is a Lewis acid, Lewis base interactions, which are highly, highly efficient extract, uh, adsorption or interactions. And thus it retains the phospholipids on its surface. And hence it removes the unwanted phospholipids from the sample. So this is a hybrid SPE, a patented technology to remove to remove your phospholipids. Because phospholipids, I'm talking about phospholipids when your sample is biological in origin. But if your sample doesn't have phospholipids, then one doesn't need to use hybrid SPE phospholipid cartridges. One can work with the conventional solid phase extraction cartridges. And the next is solid phase micro extraction. So what is solid phase micro extraction? It is a solventless extraction technique which is used mainly when we work with gas chromatography. Now, what people are trying to do, uh, which I've already also mentioned when I was talking about liquid liquid extraction, that people are trying to reduce the volume of organic solvents that are being used. In protein precipitation, you use volume up to say two to three ml. In solid phase extract, in in liquid liquid extraction, also you use volume say about one to three ml. In solid phase extraction, also you use about two ml of uh, two to three ml maximum of organic solvents. Now, can solid phase extraction? be further modified so that the volume of organic solvents that are used could be further reduced. That is the whole purpose of solid phase micro extraction. And therefore, 
it is called as solventless extraction technique you require essentially a drop of your organic solvent one or two or three drops of so it is it comes down to under 0.5 ml it comes down under 0.5 ml of organic solvents that one can use and the difference is you can see on the right hand side the figure for solid phase extraction you will find it very different from the conventional solid phase extraction it is solid phase micro extraction spme uh now how it how it functions now it has a silica fiber as you can see this is a silica fiber which is coated with which is coated with a solid adsorbent solid adsorbent which could be your similar material which you use in solid phase extraction or it could even be a polymer it could even be a polymer polymer which can be very selective in extracting the analyte of interest based on molecularly imprinted polymer approach where one can separate highly selectively the analyte of interest in presence of a bulk containing matrix very efficiently to isme karte ye hai ki ye jo fiber hota hai ispe kuch adsorbent laga dete hain aur wo adsorbent jab hum gas mein rakhte hain to gas mein se jitne bhi analytes hain they get adsorbed on the surface of this adsorbent which is there on the fiber and then this syringe based extraction technique can be directly used to inject in a gc gas chromatography just like a syringe and then the analyte can be dissolved from the surface of the adsorbent directly into the instrument and that is how it is being used mainly for gas chromatography sampling for gas chromatography <coughs> the difference is even one drop of liquid is sufficient enough or two drops of liquid are sufficient enough to adsorb the analyte of interest from those two drops with high efficiency and therefore this is now do a little expensive as compared to conventional spe or even hybrid spe but still the degree of selectivity is much higher as compared with your conventional spe or hybrid spe but the purpose is different the purpose here is not quantitative it is very small volumes or gas or analyte can be adsorbed from the surface even without touching the analyte with without touching the sample if one can generate a vapor of analytes those vapor can get adsorbed on the surface of the fiber and then it can be desorbed when you inject in a gas chromatography theek hai ye kuch cheez samajh mein aayi I, did you understand hybrid sp and sp and solid phase micro extraction yes sir i, I mean uh, who who is it salome okay salome what about others i mean i don't know whether dhru is present abhishek and uh, ashish and parth and many others uh, yes sir Yes, sir. Yes, okay. And Milan, yes, Milan. Yes, I don't know whether Milan is there or not. Uh, Milan, I cannot see your faces today. This is this is very disheartening. I mean, anyway, and there are different configurations. मतलब 
डिफरेंट डिफरेंट कॉन्फिग्रेशन होते हैं टू डू दिस एस पी एम ई देखो आप सैंपल है ग्रीन एंड येलो है एक्सट्रैक्शन फेज मतलब वही जो मटीरियल जो होता है जो आप फाइबर पे लगा देते हैं उसके कितने फॉर्म्स होते हैं कितने फॉर्म्स होते हैं कितने शेप्स होते हैं आप देख रहे हो उसको पार्टिकल में भी लगा दिया जाए गोल गोल छोटे छोटे पार्टिकल्स और सैंपल में डाल दिया जाए तो भी एड्सॉर्प्शन हो जाता है उसको स्टरर बार में भी अगर लगा दिया जाए येलो वन इज योर एक्सट्रैक्शन फेज तो भी वो सैंपल में से एक्सट्रैक्ट हो जाता है इसकी वॉल्स पे भी अगर लगा दिया जाए तो वॉल्स में भी ये एक्सट्रैक्शन हो जाता है इसका एक जो नीडल होती है या डिस्क होती है जिसको आप स्टरिंग जिसे स्टरिंग करते हो उस पर भी अगर ये लगा दिया जाए तो ये सैंपल में से इसमें एड्सॉर्ब हो जाता है सो दीज आर डिफरेंट कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ सॉलिड फेज माइक्रो एक्सट्रैक्शन दीज आर सर्टन आई मीन आई कैन आस्क यू शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन मेनी शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन वन शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन कुड बी what is the purpose of hybrid spe what is the purpose of hybrid spe so your answer would be the main intention of using hybrid spe is to remove proteins as well as phospholipids that would be your answer so this is one 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 short question now whatever i am speaking today will not be a part of your internal examination for internal examination i have received questions from two persons and i have already done the needful from whatever you have given me yesterday and few days back so whatever i have i am teaching today will be a part of your final exams only starting from solid phase extraction onwards solid phase extraction hybrid sp and spme <clears throat> this this part i'm not going to ask in the internal examination on 9th so this is what i have already explained uh see every extraction process is an equilibrium step is an equilibrium step jab koi cheez सैंपल में से किसी मटेरियल में जाती है तो एक इक्विबिरियम स्टेप एक स्टेप एक स्टैब्लिश होता है कि एट दैट स्टेप देर इज नो फर्दर एड्सॉप्शन दैट मींस एड्सॉप्शन इज इक्वल टू डिसऑप्शन व्हेन यू पुट योर एसपीएमई इन योर सैंपल तो दैट डायनेमिक इक्विबिरियम इज स्टैब्लिश and when dynamic equilibrium is established theoretically 95% of your analyte gets adsorbed on the surface so practically the efficiency which you can attain is about 95% with solid phase micro extraction that is what is intended out of uh, these three four statements here and this this is something which again of of academic interest and the fiber is exposed to a gaseous or liquid sample it is simply exposed or head space above a solid or liquid that means when we say head space means you have a solid sample you you need not have to dip your needle with that adsorbent in the solid phase no you can keep it on the top just agitate your solid sample you may be warm your solid sample the vapors of your analyte will get adsorbed on the surface that is how extraction occurs in spme and therefore this is one such technique technique in which you need not even bring your sample in complete contact with your fiber aapko dono ko contact karne ki bhi zarurat nahi hai आपके पास सैंपल रखा है बीकर में आप ऊपर ही रखिए ये एस पी डिवाइस और सैंपल को हीट करिए तो जो वेपर्स होंगे वेपर्स ऑफ एनोलाइट विल गेट एड्सॉर्ब ऑन द सरफेस 
and then you take it out and then inject in your gas chromatogram graph and uh, that will be dissolved immediately because gc works at a high temperature at high temperature the sample gets dissolved and it enters into the column in gc so that is what is uh, uh, actually happens or done uh, during micro 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 extraction and therefore this is what is mentioned here then there are few other things that which talk about the recoveries uh, which are uh, obtained matlab when you work with quantitative recoveries when we say quantitative recovery means ki aapke paas kafi sara sample hai usme kafi sara analyte hai lekin limitation ye hai ki aapke paas ek hi fiber hai jis pe adsorbent hai to utna hi lag payega jitna lagna hai to kafi sara reh jayega so recovery may not be quantitative all always depending upon the sample which you use but it will be highly highly reproducible most important criteria highly reproducible greater precision uh, precision that is what you attain in this okay despite a slight setback in absolute recoveries the major advantage is you have reduced the use of organic solvent by you know 10 15 20 times that is the major you know achievement of solid phase micro extraction so it can be considered as a green sample preparation technique which is practically which is practically devoid of any organic toxic organic solvent so that is one major you know consideration so that was about solid phase extraction and now the last part and that is cloud point extraction for separation and pre concentration now this is very important now cloud point extraction is not a new technique or a new approach but it has been introduced in your syllabus since last year because one thing first is it of course is a sample preparation technique at the same time it pre concentrates the sample very similar to the liquid liquid extraction very similar to the liquid liquid extraction so this is what you achieve you achieve using cloud point extraction there is a significance attached to cloud point extraction how you reach a cloud point for any system and previously maybe 30 40 years back it was used for extracting metal ions it was used for extracting metal ions but now it can be also used for organic molecules it can be used for certain pollutants it can be used for pesticides insecticides to remove from your sample but apart from this one major advantage is that it is devoid of matlab isme hum organic solvent lete hi nahi hai isme hum organic solvent lete hi nahi hai this is where you can understand that when you look at these techniques one after another what is being modified what is different the difference is one minute one minute
सर आवाज नहीं आ रही ओके नाउ कैन यू हियर मी यस ओके ओके तो मैं आपको ये बता रहा था कि जब आप पानी है पानी में अगर आप सरफेक्टिन डालेंगे तो पहले तो वो डिसॉल्व हो जाएगा लेकिन और डालते जाएंगे तो एक टर्बिडिटी सी जनरेट हो जाएगी अब टर्बिडिटी सी जनरेट हो जाने के बाद एक ऐसा समय आता है जिसको हम कहते हैं क्रिटिकल मिसल कॉन्सेंट्रेशन सीएमसी उसमें यह होता है कि द सर्फेक्टेंस ट्राइज टू ऑर्गेनाइज इन दिस फॉर्म इस फॉर्म में बनते हैं मतलब नॉन पोलर नॉन पोलर एक तरफ हो जाते हैं और पोलर आउटसाइड हो जाते हैं पोलर आउटसाइड क्यों हो जाते हैं बिकॉज ये सोल्यूशन तो पानी में है So, पानी में ये पोलर ग्रुप रहता है और ये नॉन पोलर ग्रुप बीच में बन जाता है इसको हम कहते हैं मिसल्स और ये जो है ये मिसल्स जो फॉर्म होते हैं वो फॉर्म कब होते हैं अब द क्रिटिकल मिसल आई मीन ये मिसल कंसेंट्रेशन इसका मतलब है कि जब कंसेंट्रेशन इतना ज्यादा हो जाता है सरफेक्टेंट का तो दे ट्राई टू सेल्फ असेंबल सेल्फ असेंबल इन द फॉर्म ऑफ मिसल्स अब मिसल्स में जब फॉर्म हो जाता है तो वन कैन इजिली पुट इन पुट एन ऑर्गेनिक मॉलिक्यूल विच इज हाइड्रोफोबिक इन नेचर इन टू द सेंटर बिकॉज देर विल बी हाइड्रोफोबिक हाइड्रोफोबिक इंट्रैक्शन ऑर्गेनिक मॉलिक्यूल इज हाइड्रोफोबिक एंड दिस इंटीरियर पार्ट इज अगेन हाइड्रोफोबिक सो देर इज हाइड्रोफोबिक हाइड्रोफोबिक इंट्रैक्शन एंड द मॉलिक्यूल गेट्स ट्रैप विद इन दिस माइसेल इस माइसेल ये जब भी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन होता है तो दिस इज इन डायनेमिक इक्लिबिरियम विथ इट्स मोनोमर्स इन इट्स मोनोमर्स दीज आर द मोनोमर्स सरफेक्टेंस सो दिस इज अ डायनेमिक इक्लिबिरियम एंड इवन इन इन एनी गिवन सोल्यूशन यू विल फाइंड फ्री मोनोमर्स एंड यू विल फाइंड मिसल्स एंड मिसल्स आर द वंस विच इन कैप्सुलेट द हाइड्रोफोबिक सब्सटेंसेस विद इन दिस मिसल्स एंड हेंस दे एक्सट्रैक्ट organic molecules from your sample from your sample and once you heat this sample uh, this solution they form a separate phase that they form a separate phase ek alag phase ban jata hai pani mein hi alag phase ban jata hai and that phase contains micelles matlab you take one phase in which you add surfactant and then you keep on adding when you get micelles and then you when you heat it it forms a distinct phase ek alag phase bana deta hai so pani ke andar do phase create ho jate hain aur jo phase micel hota hai micel phase hota hai uske andar analyte hota hai so that that portion can be simply removed and 
it contains your analyte or analytes of interest. So this serves as a very good extraction process as well as pre-concentration. Pre-concentration means when you increase the concentration of your analytes uh, from a larger volume to a smaller volume. So this volume of this phase, this phase of uh, the volume of this phase is very small as compared to the aqueous phase. So naturally there is pre-concentration. So this is one of the major advantages of, uh, then you have something like, uh, the shapes could be spherical, they may not be spheric, may not be spherical, depending upon the structure of your surfactants. And um, missiles, as you know, will only form above the critical missile temperature. So that means at a temperature, at a temperature, when you heat it, when you heat your sample, they form a distinct phase. And that temperature is also very critical. The temperature also is very, very critical for formation of missile missile doesn't form at any 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 concentration they form at a they are formed at a very typical concentration this is entirely a different chemistry of surfactants but when you heat it it forms a different phase this is the beauty of this technique that when you heat your sample heating doesn't mean you need to go up to 100 degrees centigrade you can keep it at 50 degrees centigrade for about 15 20 minutes and it will form a distinct phase and once that distinct phase is formed it will have your analyte of interest and that is how it works. And it tries to solubilize all hydrophobic compounds. In case if you have metal ions, the metal ions will first complex with your chelating agents. It will form a bigger species. They get trapped. They get trapped within this missiles. And when you heat it, you warm it, they form a different phase, which is a very small phase which is a small, small phase, you remove this phase and you will get all the analyte or analytes of interest. So that is, and these are the different steps which I just mentioned. Uh, you can uh, simply decant your, uh, this phase, co cohesivertate phase. That means this is a very small, dense phase, phase which contains some missiles and your analyte of interest. That is the phase <clears throat> and this phase can be separated by centrifugation and this is what I just mentioned um, the mechanism how it works and these are some of the some of the uh, some of the you know surfactants which are being used Tritonax, Tritonax 14, uh, 100, 14, 100 these are one of the commonly used ones and then there are many others twin 80 is also being used these are essentially non-ionic surfactants and application part is it, they can be used to remove, as I said, pollutants from water. They can be used to remove, uh, you know, uh, this is very important, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are very difficult to treat from soils. So those also can be removed, polychlorinated biphenyls and many other pesticides, organochlorine pesticides and others can also be separated using SPE, oh, sorry, CPE. There is another example where herbicides can be removed from milk sample. Herbicides like atrazine, cyanazine, simazine, and simetrazine can also be isolated from uh, milk sample. This is the simple process by which you can extract. So basically, it is an extraction technique. It extracts, and then you can analyze by any known technique, either by spectrophotometry, or fluorescence, or HPLC, or whatever technique is around. It can also be used for separating ph pharmaceuticals. Uh, benzodiazepines have been separated. Lorazepam is also separated and recovered to the extent of 52%. And likewise, and then they can be analyzed by, as I said, by any known analytical tool that is HPLC. So this was all about what I wanted to share with you regarding this unit. I have already shared this unit. I'll already shared this unit. Uh, I'll be giving you questions when we meet next time. I'll be sending the message through our WhatsApp group so that there is no issues and then again i'll be giving questions from the second unit as well when we meet again i'll be informing you keep you informed when to meet uh, it may not be in our usual time between 9 or 12 or 1 it can be some something else maybe in the evening also i can have a meeting and then i'll be sharing all those questions important questions one liners and the uh, long questions for unit 1 remaining part and unit 2 complete
Thank you. Uh, I think is it okay? Yes, Have you understood? Yes, sir. Okay. So that is how we are going to proceed now. आज जैसे मैंने बताया कि मैं ये मैंने बता दिया है ये unit almost done. It is done. I'll be giving you questions, remaining questions, uh, which you can prepare for your uh, final exams, and then unit two as well. And unit two also will be done simultaneously by madam, so uh, it will be completed. But I'll be giving you questions in such a way that uh, it will be much easier for you to write and what to write. Those are the things which I'm going to discuss when we meet again. But that time will not be because uh, it may be tomorrow also. I can ask you to join for about half an hour or forty-five minutes, and uh, if you join, I can share those questions as well. You can write, and then you can send it to me so that others also can uh, have those questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.